Welcome back. In this video, I put many layers of glass on the outside of the cabin top. There's a whole lot of holes in the cabin top, which have all been filled with glue. Be interesting to know what the total is. It's lots. But we're getting very close to glassing. <laughs> I love it when you've mixed up a big batch of coating material and you run out just where it comes to the end of where you need to cove. I'm a bit reluctant to get into it today. Yesterday I ended up doing a six hour straight stint on some glassing on the cabin top. It was quite a large area of glassing relatively because it had many layers and it took me quite a bit longer than I expected. Um, I don't think the high humidity, it's been raining for 24 hours here, was a big issue but um, I did look up last night to see if it is a really bad thing to do a lot of glassing and quite high humidity conditions and there are issues but I don't think I'm in the zone yet of it being concerned structurally or anything. So let's head down to the shed which I'm doing right now and see how it went. So this is how it looks, the peel ply is still on. Um, it's so much stiffer than it was. Um, I can stand on here now without glass on the inside, which will make a huge difference to the structural strength, um, of course. But on the top here, I've got, well, I've got these carbon bands. I did that to stabilize the cabin top in this very changeable weather with the humidity, which worked really well. Um, it does it did give a bit of a proud point there, but what I did was laid some um, biaxial in the spaces between the carbon, I laid that as the first layer and then I put some uni with the strength going across the boat, put a layer of cloth on for, with that and then I put another layer of uni down here and I put some more biaxial, extra layer of biaxial here around where that turning point is for lifting the dagger board. Um, I put an extra layer of uni here for where it um, clutches will go, the winch will be. So I'll put some uni on the inside and I may even turn the boat over to do that. It might be slightly milky because of the high humidity yesterday, but I think it's okay. So today I won't be so ambitious in what I try to achieve. I'll probably just um, do another strip of um, a single layer of biax, 400 gram biax, and under that will be a single layer of uni across the boat here in this area. And that'll get me nearly up to that hatch there. So I think that's a big enough target for the day because I'll tell you what, my hand's really feeling it after a six hours of non-stop rolling. So this time I put some tape around the inside against the sides and I made a bit of polystyrene, it's a little bit oversized, and um, forced that down into it and that will definitely will have stopped the resin from going down inside there. <laughs>
what's worse than some of the dangers of boat building? Um, this year there's been no monarch butterflies. They think it's the wasps. It's been a bad year for wasps. And I nearly stood on a big nest in the ground this morning up above my banana plantation. So that's two more nests I had to deal with. There was one very close by as well. And you, do, you don't want them slinging you. And once they start attacking, they'll swarm on you and they have been known to kill people. So I don't like using this stuff, but I used it once again and I've used it three times successfully this summer so far. And I put it in this pot. There's wasp flying me in my head right now. Um, I put it in this pot and from a distance um, tipped it into the hole in the ground. Um, I think I got a good shot on both of them, but this time, unusually, I was attacked a bit around my head by one or two wasps, so I'm quite glad I put this silly netting around my head. So what's the reward for taking one day off working on the boat? You get these. I don't know, maybe 20 kgs, 50 pounds, and they came from up there so not bad for a little bit of effort so I didn't spend the whole day working on the property I couldn't resist coming down to see how this went what have I done here instead of using peel ply and it would have been quite tricky over all this area and it was a really hot day yesterday and even though I was using slow hardener it was cracking off just about as fast as I could mix it I was only using mixing 200 gram uh, mills at a time so anyway I thought I'll give it a go in the boat yards that I've worked and I've seen the um, the experts put on their cloth and then instead of using peel ply they have put on while there's still a chance of a chemical bond they've rolled on or brushed on some um, some fairing epoxy which I've done here I didn't it was still a bit like paint, so I could roll it on. So that's what I've done here, and I think it's going to work out quite well. There'll be, I mean, even with peel ply, you have to do a bit of sanding, and uh, there'll definitely be a bit of sanding with this. But it's, it's a good start. It filled out, filled all the um, porosity I would have had with the peel ply. I would have had to do that with a lot of resin over the top of the peel ply. Well, that's how I do it. And um, so we'll see how... In hindsight, if it was a great idea, so far I think it was. Um, I've used a bit of this kind of epoxy with some fairing filler in it before, and it, it makes it quite crisp when if you let it cure for at least 24 hours, and it makes it really easy to sand. It doesn't clog the sandpaper. Of course, what I'll have to do first, which you don't have to peel, do with peel ply, but it's very easy. It's just um, apparently you can use just plain water, but I usually put a little bit of detergent in. Scrub it down, get rid of that blush that's in there. I'm going to put one more skin down over here and down there. And that, this part of the end of the boat pretty much finishes up the glassing on the outside. So that's the rule. Pretty happy about reaching that point. And on Monday morning, I believe my trapezoid hatch arrives from the people at Kewl. They're visiting this way, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what that looks like and fitting that to the boat. I couldn't resist giving it a bit of a wet sand to see how it went. And it goes quite well. These corners come up nicely. All this, of course, does not get me not fairing it. I will have to apply trowel on some fairing filler. Um, and there'll be a bit of hand sanding before that because there's some ridges and bumps and high points like where the straps are. That's one of the downsides of using these straps. It requires a bit more filler between them. From my experience now, can I say is it a successful method that I've seen these um, boat builders using in the yards I've worked in as, a, as an engineer fitting out the engineering side of boats? Um, Yes, I would definitely say so. Um, it's not a, that wasn't a huge amount of effort at all to bring it up to a point where it's ready for the next 
I think even on this area here, I'll just be able to brush on another coat of the same stuff, maybe a little bit thicker. It won't be pretty, but I think it'll sand up really well. It'll fill up the low points, which are, hardly exist. It's gone so well. Definitely the areas like this will need a spread like I did for the bottom of the hull and the top sides. But um, am I happy with that? Yes, I am. That's all the glassing finished on the outside of the cabin, I'm happy to say, except for the um, companionway bulkhead here, which integrates with the cockpit, so I can't finish off all that right now. Got to do the cockpit first, which will be coming up soon, but one of my priorities is to glass the inside now. So the boat may be, next time you see it, may be upside down, so I can walk around on the cabin top inside and make it'll make my life a lot easier to glass the inside of the cabin. So that's what I'm thinking. I've already got most of the gear set up for that. I've just got to redo how I lift it up from the transom. And that may mean I have to work out where the rudder pintles are, the rudder bearings, so that I can make up a fitting there to lift the boat from. See you next time. Cloaked in folds of midnight Water side by side We sons and all